admin section or the backend section of WP data tables stands for uh, literally all the pages that are generated by the plugin in the WordPress uh, admin panel or WordPress backend, whatever you prefer. So um, if you're working with WordPress, you're of course already familiar with how it looks. So here's the standard uh, admin panel of WordPress and here you see the section uh, which is called WP Data Tables. And uh, basically it's the browse page, add from data source page and the same is used for editing tables that have been uh, created from some data source. Then there is the uh, WP Data Table constructor, uh, WP Data Tables charts, which is the charts browse page, uh, create chart wizard, uh, which is uh, also used for editing charts and the settings page. Uh, so in this video, we are not going to stop on each and every uh, function, checkbox, uh, parameter setting uh, of each page. Just <clears throat> we are going to give you a brief overview of which page stands for what. So first one is the table browse page. And this is open by default. If you click on the WP Data Tables admin menu, uh, menu link. Here you can see all the tables that have been created from uh, created in your WordPress installation. Uh, each page, each table has its name, so you can edit or delete it from here. You can see the type of the table. Uh, you can see the short code that you can use to insert this table. Also, there is the duplicate button, which you can use then to. Uh, duplicate the table with all the same settings and if you need for example two tables that are really similar you can set up one table then duplicate it and uh, change the settings on the second one uh, also there uh, for tables that are created using table constructor uh, that's been manually input or that's been imported from CSV or Excel file using the table constructor there is the edit data button here which opens the backend editor uh, the backend editor, we have, a, we have a video tutorial on using it as well. I will just mention here that it's very similar to front-end editor. It allows you to fill in and change the structure of tables and add or uh, delete or change rows uh, completely from WordPress backend. So what else do we have on the browse page? Uh, as I said, table IDs, uh, duplicate edit data, you can go to edit. So also it's split to pages and you can use the WP data table setting to configure how many tables you want to see on per page. By default, it's 10. Also there are bulk actions. So for example, you can check several tables and then delete them. And of course you can uh, choose to add a new table from here. Next, next page is add from data source. Uh, or uh, the same is editing tables that have been added from a data source. Uh, again, there will be a lot of uh, tutorials uh, which explain that in more detail. Here I will just mention that basically there are two types of WP data tables. First type is the WP data table which is added from some data source. Uh, for example, from MySQL query, Excel, CSV file, um, Google spreadsheet. Basically, you already prepared uh, your table data somewhere outside of WP data tables, and then you just uh, link a new WP data table to this data source. And WP data table always fetches the data from this data source and shows it to your WordPress users. And the second type is WP data tables created by the table constructor. Uh, in this case, you don't have a pre-existing data source. You create uh, the table and fill it in and edit it uh, completely from WordPress backend. So this page, add from data source or edit WP data table uh, is basically for creating or editing tables uh, that have been added from some data source. Uh, also, you can change some settings in this page for the tables created manually by Table Constructor, but uh, the number of these settings are cut. We will stop on this as well in, 
in the further tutorials. <clears throat> so on this page you can configure table title, you can check or uncheck this checkbox uh, if you want to show or hide this table title in the WordPress frontend, then you can choose the type of the table. Uh, MySQL query, CSV file, Excel file, Google spreadsheet, XML file, JSON file, or serialized PHP array. We have a uh, separate tutorial for, for each of these table types, so I will not stop on this right now. In this case, we have a MySQL query table type, so we have a SQL editor here where you can edit and uh, work on your MySQL query as you want. Also, the type of your table is MySQL query. You can toggle the placeholder configuration block. So you can define the default for current user ID placeholder, for free variable placeholders. Uh, again, we have a separate tutorial on placeholders. You can browse to it if you're interested. Then there are, if, if, we are, uh, if the table type is MySQL, uh, you can also enable front-end editing and there is also a number of settings for front-end editing uh, server-side processing it's also available only for mysql type a responsibility responsiveness sorry uh, this checkbox uh, allows hiding or showing the table sorry hiding the table until the page is completely loaded so users would not see the flash of the data in non non rendered table before uh, the page is completely loaded and ready. Uh, also, there are settings for filtering, uh, showing filter in a form or in a widget, showing the table tools block, uh, enable or disabling sorting for the table, lim limiting the table layout to be fixed within the container, um, enabling or disabling word wrap. Also, the display length. So um, this setting stands for how many rows will the front end user see in your table. Also, you have the preview button here. So if you change some settings, save them, you can always preview how will the table look without actually going in the, in the backend. So see here how it looks. Uh, then there is the column settings block. So each column that uh, our table will have has a block of settings here. You can browse within them. Uh, you can reorder them by just drag and drop. You can change the names that will be shown to the front-end user. Add CSS classes. If, you, um, if it's used for front-end editing or filtering, you can define um, existing possible values or defaults for these. Also type of filter, type data type of column. So basically this, uh, this uh, setting of data column uh, data type for the column it basically configures how the uh, cell value values will be rendered so will the, these values be treated as float numbers or as integer numbers or as dates or as pure uh, strings or whatever uh, also column can be, can be used for grouping can be used for default sorting in ascending or descending order um, you can define column width, uh, some text that will be displayed before or after each cell's value or you can choose the color for the column and check or uncheck the visible checkbox which will show or hide the table uh, in, the, in the front end. Next page is the WP Data Table Constructor uh, which is basically a table creation wizard which allows you to create either uh, tables manually or import your tables from Excel or CSV files or to generate uh, MySQL queries to your WordPress database or to uh, just any uh, custom MySQL database. Uh, there are so many options here, so you see if you choose, uh, choose one of the options and go to next, uh, it has different sub pages so we have again uh, separate tutorials for each of the uh, use cases of the table constructor so i will not stop on this right now just to let you know basically this is a wizard which allows you to create <coughs> tables completely from the wordpress backend next page is the wp data tables charts or wp data charts 
this is uh, basically a browse page for the charts so the same as for tables you can see the table uh, sorry chart title a render engine used for this chart the chart type because each render engine has a lot of subtypes and the short code that you can use to insert the chart in the table in the page um, again if you choose the different number of rows in the table uh, in wp data table settings you will see not 10 as uh, it's defined here by default but maybe 25 or 50 or whatever you prefer then you can open any of these charts click edit or delete and um, yeah so editing is also triggered from from this uh, browse page uh, which brings us to the next uh, page in uh, WP data tables admin this is create chart wizard uh, so basically again this is a step-by-step -step wizard which allows you to create charts easily you can define the chart name pick a render engine for example high charts uh, we pick a WP data table for a data source um, I don't know this one and we choose the table, uh, we choose the columns that will be used there for the series data and then we can choose, maybe we can choose some range of rows, for example, if we don't need all of the, uh, we don't need all of the rows there, we can drag and drop and choose uh, some row range, but I will not do this right now, and then we can define some additional settings like uh, series columns or series names and then uh, go to preview and see how the chart will look so uh, basically right now I didn't pick some column set that would make any sense so the chart didn't render but if I go back and play around and choose something more uh, more senseful like I don't know, yeah, the high charts let's take a stacked column chart and use another uh, you know, another table here okay want all the columns except this one and let's see what we have so you see it renders the chart so it's not saved yet uh, uh, we will go through the chart wizard in a separate tutorial in all the detail to explain you all the settings there uh, just to show you what this page stands for and the last one is the WP data table settings. Uh, you can open the tutorial on uh, WP data tables configuration. Uh, there we stop on each and every uh, of these settings in detail. So basically this is a page which allows you to define settings which will be common for all of the WP data tables within your system. So uh, that's it. Thanks for watching and see you in next tutorials. Purchase WP Data Tables exclusively on Code Canyon.